Welcome back, you whiskey loving legends, to another episode of Was It Worth Whiskey? And today we're going to be looking at the Octomore series, which is a brand new release. Well, the 12 series, anyway, there's a 12.1, but the 12 series has just only recently come out in the last couple of days. Um, basically, I was, I was lucky enough, to, I was at the uh, London Whiskey Show on the weekend. Um, and I got to try all three of these, as well as our amazing 1985 32-year-old book, Luddy, which, if you ever get a chance to, I highly recommend it because it was fucking amazing. Anyway, back to the Octomores. As I said, this is the 12.1, um, which is matured, fully matured in ex-bourbon barrels. The uh, 12.2 is matured in ex-bourbon barrels and sawton casks. Uh, which sweet wine and uh, 12.3 is matured in 75% ex bourbon barrel casks and 25% PX casks. So they do share a few things in common. They are all super heavily peated, um, which we'll talk about later because I don't like the fact that they call them super heavy peated, even though they are. We'll talk about that later. Um, they are all matured in, uh, for five years on Isla um, and they all use 100% Scottish barley and it's a limited release so each year they do a limited release I think there's 30,000 bottles of these and maybe 30,000 or 0.2 and I think there's less of 0.3 maybe 1,800 or something like that so all, obviously all natural color, natural, um, no chill filtering. The color is super, super light, almost like a Riesling sort of wine in the 0.1. And this is at a whopping 59.9 ABV. So what I was talking about with the, um, it kind of puts a lot of people off when they see they're super heavy peated or heavy peated. And I, I I kind of talk about when I'm talking about the Port Charlotte, for example, the, the 10 year old here, the heavily peated. I mean, they are heavily peated for sure, but they're not, when we think heavily peated, when I first thought heavily peated, I was thinking of those really strong um, Lafrags or really strong Talaskers, or which is a real ashtray sort of nastiness. These are more of a, this heavily peated is more of a, a barbecue smoke flavor or not even barbecue but yes it is barbecue sort of flavor um and it, it kind of it, it enhances all the other flavors in the whiskey so rather than covering up all the flavors as some others do this actually enhances a lot of the flavors so enough waffling on about it let's get crack a lack and onto it i reckon very strong in the nose straight up I get like a, it's a sweet barbecue nose, a meaty, like a sweet barbecue meatiness. I get tropical fruits, some pineapple, caramel, hay, dried apricots. It's quite a, quite a complex nose when you get into it. We'll give it a little taste with that water first, just to see a bit of a comparison. Mm. The palate is so thick and creamy. And you get this a bit of a whack of these fresh fruits and then bam, this barbecue smoke, but not too much, not overpowering. And then I get this uh, bourbon fruitiness and then this lovely oak spice. But quite strong, obviously, at, at uh, 59.9 ABV. Uh, the finish as it is, um, it's kind of, it's long, definitely long, like a, the, the, this really packs a long sort of punch. Um, I get light honey fruits and wafts of this like caramelized smoke, if there is such a thing. And um, of course, this, this beautiful oak, light oak spice that just carries it through with the fruits and the barbecue smoke. And it just kind of wafts on and on and on. Well, I think we should put some water in it because I don't think I would drink it like this. I think I'd definitely put some water in it. And it does certainly open it up a bit more as well, I found. 
not too much trying to try I'm trying to get it down to about 50 50 ABV is kind of my sweet spot for the uh, optimal just let that work its magic a bit so on the nose with a bit of water um, it's sweeter a lot sweeter the the smoke is is dissipated a lot and then I get these crisp fruits vanilla and like this this freshness comes about it um we get we get um like mint mint and menth menthol mint or menthol um, as well as all the other uh, uh, other nose um before so obviously the tropical fruits the pineapple caramel it's a bit more enhanced those sweeter fruits the pineapple and the caramel the hay is still there Mm, it just it opens it up a bit more so you can identify a few more of those flavors and the fruits maybe some different sort of hay notes as well very nice so with a bit of water you go from this thick and creamy to this beautiful velvety coating so it's kind of becomes just right i think um as well as you you still ain't getting the barbecue smoke not as much that burby fruitiness is still there um i get kind of like a a, a toasted marshmallow remember as a kid we did we used to on around the campfire we used to toast vanilla marshmallows i'm kind of getting that flavor a bit and i like it as well as the the oak spice is emphasized a bit with that added water as well on the finish um opens it right up on the fish and it keeps on going for just as long but opens it right up so i get pineapple papaya grapes um it's kind of goes from this sweet to dry so it's kind of this perfect mix of sweetness and dryness um it really does on the finish become this this beautiful perfection that just sits there and wafts heavenly through your mouth so all in all a very very nice bloody little drop but uh, it does come at a healthy little price tag as well but first i'll give it a score one out of 100. i'm going to give the nose i'm going to give it 89 points for the nose i'm going to give it a 91 points for the palate and i'm going to give it a 90 points i almost think about 91 90 points on the finish so given an uh, average total score of 90 points I almost feel like I could give it 91 points, but I'm going to stick with 91 points, 90 points. But like we said, this bad boy, limited edition, comes at a quite a hefty price. So we're talking about 20, 125 pounds, or maybe 225 USD. I think I seen on a pre-order um, in the US, and I haven't seen it in. A, Australia yet, but I'm guessing it'll be around the 300 plus mark in AUD. So, as this is, was it worth it? Whisk whiskies, um, is it worth it? Is it worth paying that money for this whiskey? Well, it's a bloody nice drop. It's bloody beautiful. Um, what comes into this one a bit as well? It's a limited edition. It's not you're not going to be able to buy it every year. Every year it's going to be slightly different or, or a different. You know that's that's what it goes around so it's limited edition so in that i'm gonna put it a thumbs up as a was it worth it and i'm gonna give it a six out of ten because for me it's something that i wouldn't buy um bottles and bottles of it but i might buy a bottle of it every year to try out because it's a limited edition so i definitely buy it um it's going to be slightly different every year and if you love or if you've tasted you love brook bloody um or the port shell or anything like that then i guarantee you're going to love this stuff it is amazing so till next time drinks up cheers